is WSHIT's head sports reporter, Jim Touchdown Jeffries. Welcome to the game of the week. That's right, I'm the same touchdown Jim that scored the final six points in the state class D championship game back in 1976. You may remember the game as fondly as I do. Touchdown Jim, that's me, ran 72 yards in the wrong direction, confused by the bright lights, only to be carried back by my quarterback to the opposing end zone where the final touchdown was scored. And while I had not even made the team that year, we were six players short that day because the opposing team failed to show up and the coach made the call. And that, my good friends, is how history is made. That's how history is made. We have a hell of a game for you tonight. The Crab Apple Nutbags, our boys, are facing their toughest competitors in the Sheboygan Sheep Wranglers. This, my friends, is as exciting as a six to seven year old T-ball match is ever gonna get. So let's go down to the field where Coach Derek Ponderosa is fresh off probation and ready to give his pre-game talk. Our goals. <laughs> Our, listen, listen, our goals are to hit dingers. Everybody better have their eyes on me. Eyes on me, Rylan. Hit dingers. Disgrace the pitcher's family. Make the other families, other players cry and stomp their butts into the ground. Does everyone understand that? Does everybody understand that? Look, fellas, look, look, look. There are two types of people in this world. There's two types of people in this world. There's winners and, and there's losers. And ev- just so that we're clear, every time we step on this field, our goal is to be a winner. And if your dad has said, oh, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose, just as long as you have fun, well, I hate to say it, your dad's a loser, okay? So let's get, out, let's get our hands in. That team's pretty good, but we are gooder. So let's go gooder on three. Let's go gooder on three. I could not have said it better myself, coach. Your dad is a loser indeed. Let's take a quick commercial break and we'll be back with the game. Early 2020, the world shut down. Stores, restaurants, schools, and whole communities shut their doors in an effort to protect human life. As the world quickly changed, one man went on Facebook to get a degree in internet epidemiology. Brian, along with his lab assistant, Hotley, are curing coronavirus by commenting on fake news and reposting recipes of secret virus cures from a friend of a friend who works high up in government. Join Brian and Hotley as they discuss the world and life during this forced interruption. Learning, laughing, and loving in this real-life commercial break. On this episode of The Commercial Break, was listening to like a motivational speaker and he would just keep repeating things that made no sense he was like a bad he was one of those youtube guys and he was like bad i don't know how i found him but he'd say stuff like that he'd be like it's you're researching for this <laughs> i was hoping somebody <laughs> i was hoping i could just press record and throw it on the podcast <laughs> and so i'm determined no matter how much money i have to spend or what lengths i have to go to i'm killing these little fuckers that keep buzzing around my head while i'm eating in my own fucking kitchen <laughs> so the only thing that I could think to play <laughs> was Home Sweet <laughs> Home Sweet Home by Motley Crue. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the next episode of the commercial break starts now. The game is on, and there's lots of companies spending multi-million dollars trying to figure these things out, and so the little mm. guy gets squashed, and so yeah. 
he's no more. So here we are, another episode of the commercial break. Welcome aboard. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Far and wide, say hello to all of our international <laughs> listeners. You know, there's the people that we think about, the big countries like Germany, Switzerland, Sweden, Australia, Great Britain. They're listening. Thank you. Hi, guys. How are you? Welcome yes, aboard. Hello. But you don't think about the smaller companies like Slovenia. Countries. Countries. What did I say? <laughs> companies. Companies? You don't think about the smaller companies like Coca-Cola, Home Depot, Walmart. Come spend money on our on our show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Slovenia, South Korea, Turkey, and Iran. Wow. Who would have thought? Nice. I know. I'm sure it's the That's Shah amazing. of Iran is listening. He's probably going, very funny, these commercial breakers. <laughs> I like them. When right, we bomb America, America, we do not bomb the commercial breakers. <laughs> right. We make little, we draw a little circle. No commercial breakers. So <laughs> welcome aboard. If it's your first time listening, this is the commercial break. I'm Brian. This is my good friend Honly. And if you're coming back, uh, welcome back. TCBpodcast.com is where you go to listen to all the episodes, read show notes, and find out more about us. You can drop us an email. And in a future episode, one episode every couple of months, we'll probably address all of the emails and comments, good and bad. So leave it. We're big boys and girls. We can take it. Yep. I will cry. I will probably spend a few <laughs> nights. My ego is I'll fragile. I'll console you. Yeah. My ego is fragile. That's why I started the podcast. I don't know if you know that. There's Psychology 101 for you. I need, I need, I need. <laughs> validation. <laughs> validation. <laughs> At the commercial break on IG, you can go to Facebook, the commercial break, and the YouTube channel is the same. And for all of you that are interested, we now have an exciting opportunity for you. If you go to tcbpodcast.com and you, there's a big button that says join the break room, that break room is where you want to be. And let me explain why, Chrissy Hoadley my good friend of many years. <laughs> Not only are you going to get your regular portion of the commercial break every Wednesday, but you're going to get an extra helping of the commercial break because we, at some point, are now going to have to put together an extra hour of content for the people who have joined the commercial break because there are people now who have joined the yes. commercial break. And unfortunately, I just thought this was going to be like, I'd say it and it sounded really sexy and then no one would <laughs> join and I'd be able to go, just keep on saying it, you know, and eventually it'd right. fade off into the distance. My wife. People are coming on. Uh -huh. Coming on board. People are coming on to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people coming like on it. to you. Because people are coming <laughs> on to me. So join yes. the break room. Extra hour of content. We are going to start doing some live shows every once in a blue moon. And um, so starting in July, we will send out that newsletter from behind with behind the scenes stuff. Uh, access to live shows and an extra hour of content. No charge. It's on us. But only if you're part of the break room. So go and join. Sweet. And I can already hear the people on the other end of this microphone, and they're asking, where's the bit, Brian? Where did you put the bit? That funny little thing or that absolutely obnoxious thing you do at the <laughs> beginning of the show, depending on who you are. Where are they? They're getting shorter and shorter, and now they're just gone. Well, let me explain. I, ne I never really intended to do a fully produced bit, like comedy bit, at the beginning of every show. I just got on a roll and decided I was going to do it for the first couple of episodes. <laughs> you were on a roll. <laughs> I was on a roll. But... They take so much time to do, like you got to write them, you got to produce some sound effects. And I do them all myself, all by myself. And mm -hmm. um, here's what I found that if it's a clunker, if like I have think I have a good idea and then it ends up sounding like absolute horse shit, which some of them do, then I just have to air them because I have no additional time to do anything else. So it's like right. you know, once I'm in it, I'm in it. It's like going to space or having a baby once you're pre you can't be kind of pregnant and you can't go backwards in pregnancy. It's like once it happens, the baby's coming. Yep. And so my shitty produced bit is coming regardless <laughs> if you want it or not. And so what I have decided to do is it's better to be good than good to be better. Did that make any sense? Yes. Let me say that again. It's better to be good than good to be better. Yes. I was listening to like of. a motivational speaker <laughs> and he would just keep repeating things that made no sense. He was like a bad, it was one of those YouTube guys and he was like bad. I don't know how I found him. But he'd say stuff like that. He'd be like, "You're researching for bits." <laughs> I was hoping somebody. <laughs> I was hoping I could just press record and throw it on the podcast. <laughs> no, I don't want to take the cheap way out. So this guy, he's like, you know, there's all like twelve views, and listen, that's not saying much coming from the commercial break where there's like twelve listens. But this right. guy is like, he'd say things, but then he'd repeat it. It's slower, so this, <laughs> like that makes it yeah. true. It's better to have the cup half full than to put bleach in your socks. <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you get that? Let me repeat that parable. It's better to have the cup half full than to have bleach in your socks. 
I'm motivated now. <laughs> and I'd be like, wow, that's <laughs> fucking profound. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bad motivational speakers. We should do that as a topic one time because there's we should. plenty of them there's out a there, ton. including myself. There's a ton. There's some really good ones, but there's, there's some really yeah, bad ones some too. Really bad ones too. So anyway, yes. listen. I'm not going to put not put out any crap. We are going to have a gold standard for bits around here. And when I get a good one, and when it comes in my head, and I have time to produce it, uh, it with at the level of which you expect, which is not saying much. <laughs> I've set the lightning up. strike. That's right. I will. Uh, I will put them out, and you'll be happy to know that moving forward, every bit will be made 100 percent in the USA. They will be mostly organic, chemical free, and no harm will come to animals anymore. <laughs> last time, last time I heard Fantastic. any animals in the making of the bits. So there you go. How are you doing? It's been an interesting week. Uh, there's lots of stuff to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's for doing sure. Doing well. Doing well. Hanging in there. It's yeah. We. We definitely had an interesting weekend with Fourth of July upon us. Um, well, the good news pool. is coronavirus is gone. Well, I think I remember telling you this. Yes, I. The great news is right here in my little spot in Atlanta. <laughs> Don't say the name. <laughs> it, it's gone. I it's mean, gone. You just come over to my pool as soon as you step through the gates. It's gone. There was massive partying going on wow. all weekend, which in turn, come to find out this morning, our pool's broken. <laughs> your pool's broken? Like they broke the pool? Did your pool get coronavirus? <laughs> what happened there? Sucked all the coronavirus Whoa. out of people and now it's strained. Do you think and the pool is really broken? Order apart. <laughs> or management no, is just a, like, not for done. <laughs> Maybe it's someone poop in the pool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been to a 4th of July party at your pool. It's out of control. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt if someone shit in the pool. I did think about throwing a candy bar there. Oh, man. I did think about throwing the candy bar. I saw and, the pictures you sent to me. to get the people. And I was like, wow. But then yeah. here where I live, there was a block party for the 4th of July. And that block party, oh, they wow. shut down the street. They put a big stage up. I couldn't believe that the city let this go what? on. What? Because the city has been rather, it's, I think, been kind of on top of it. While they haven't mandated anything, they've been putting out pretty regular notices. And we've had not a huge uh, amount of cases here in the city, specific city that I live in. Uh, but like everywhere else in the country, it's rising. And so they had a huge block party. And there was, I, w- I would have guessed, maybe a thousand people in this parking lot and on this block and not one fucking person social distancing or wearing oh a mask. Gosh. And the thing that scares me is, I mean, I'm seeing things through a different lens because I'm having a baby, right? So yes. just for me, everything's a little bit, it's a little bit scarier. It's a little bit different. So I'm being a yeah. little bit of a baby about it, but who cares? That's just what I, that's what me and my I don't family think you choose can, to do. I, I really don't think you can get mad at anybody for being too safe. You know, like, damn, that person's being too safe. <laughs> that doesn't, <laughs> just, it doesn't go together. That's do you not see that idiot wearing, <laughs> wearing a seatbelt? And driving with his door closed, sober. What a fucker. Did you see that idiot stopping at every stoplight? How dare you? Right. It's the same thing. So, no, be as careful as you would like. Please. Did you see that guy refuse both of my XDC hits after snorting an eight ball of crystal meth? How dare him? Right. So, you know, so we're looking at things just a l- we're looking at things from our perspective, like everybody is. And so it just was like, I was just so disappointed. I've given up at this point. I just figure coronavirus is gone. Let it, I guess it's gone. And I'll just continue to wear a mask and we'll we'll isolate ourselves with the new the new baby. Yeah, and, everybody's kind of on their own at this point, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I heard all, that our mayor, our mayor has it now. Yeah, the so. city of uh, city of Atlanta's mayor, uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms, has yeah. coronavirus. And so there you go. Well, she's been running around doing a whole bunch of shit. So. She has. And people in the public that are a public figure, I can kind of, you know, see how that yeah. they might be at a greater risk. Yeah. So. But why can't the people we want to get coronavirus get coronavirus? <laughs> yeah. Why does it have to be our mayor? So, right. Uh, yeah. So th- th- therefore, since I'm taking things a little bit extra carefully, I had my own pool party here at my pool, yes. which included no one but me and my son, Matthias and that was fun. And I, I did manage to get to Home Depot. Let me tell you the story. So I go to Home Depot and I walk in like we got these damn fruit flies in our house. And once you get mm. fruit flies, you can never fucking get them out. They're obnoxious, yeah. right? They just it's a problem in the summer here in Georgia. It's been every house I've ever lived in. You, no matter right. how clean you are, you get fruit flies. And there it is. But mm-hmm. I, I, I am bound and determined to find out how to kill these little <laughs> shitheads that only live for 18 hours anyway. It's like you only <laughs> live for 18 hours. How is it possible that you're overwhelming my kitchen? <laughs> 
<laughs> and so I'm determined no matter how much money I have to spend or what lengths I have to go to, I'm killing these little fuckers that keep buzzing around my head while I'm eating in my own fucking kitchen. Yes. So I was at Home Depot with my mask on and I go, you know, into the insecticide section. And as I'm walking in, there's another gentleman who is walking in like right ahead of me. Right. And so I'm like, OK, I take notice that the guy isn't wearing a mask, but this is just par for the course. Most people in my part of the world are wearing masks, but some of them aren't. And OK, whatever. Mm-hmm. So that's not the part that is interesting or funny. The part that's funny is, is that so he walks in, I walk in, we both end up in the insecticide section. I am kind of dancing around the insecticide section. I have no fucking, I'm like Mr. <laughs> Clueless, right? I have no idea. I'm like, buy, and I'm like, will rat poison work? <laughs> like, maybe I'll buy a raccoon trap. That sounds good. <laughs> I'll get those little fuckers. I have no idea what I'm doing or what I'm talking about. I'm Googling at the same time, like I often am in, yes. in Home Depot. And so it's, I'm probably there five minutes, maybe 10, maybe 10. And this guy is getting, his guy's in the insecticide section too. And he is getting more and more irritable. You can tell he's like, oh, "Oh." you know, just like under his breath. He just seems like one of those guys who's ready to blow at any moment. And so then he goes, have you seen somebody around here? And I'm like, "Uh, I see you. I mean, what do you, no, I mean like a Home Depot guy. And I'm like, I, I wasn't really looking for one, but I'm sure they're around here, sir. <laughs> Come like, to think I'm, of it, I need one too. <laughs> yeah. I, well, if you find him, I'm, I'm in line. I'll go second, right? Because yes. you seem angry. <laughs> you seem much more agitated than me. I'm like, I don't have the Home Depot logo on my shirt, but uh, no, I haven't seen anybody. So he, so he walks around the aisle. He just takes like one spin around the aisle. And then he's standing there with his hands on his hips. I got somebody coming. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And so the guy comes and he's like, I want to speak to your manager after we're done with my question. And the guy's like, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. He's like, do you not know that someone's standing here for over two hours waiting for you? (laughs) And I'm like, did you just say two (laughs) hours? What are you smoking? And can I have some? <laughs> like, I mean, right? Are you on GHB? What's going on, dude? He starts like he's like I have been standing here for almost two hours waiting for somebody to pay attention to me. I have a simple question about insecticides, and I'm like, holy shit! The guy's like his head is about to pop off his shoulders, and the poor guy is like, I'm I'm really sorry. I had no idea anybody's here. I I've been here for four hours. I, I didn't see you. Like I'm sorry, and I'm just like behind the guy, like like shaking my head. I'm like no. No, like I guess I've been waiting here for two hours. And it's he, not like a concierge there at Home Depot. Is the thing. Like they're not just going to, they're not commissioned salespeople. No. <laughs> so his question is, I got cardinals eating my flowers. How do I get rid of them? And I'm like, you're going to kill cardinals? Oh, what? no. <laughs> no. You got cardinals eating your flowers? What kind of flowers are you growing? Like, <laughs> But, uh, oh, what are you growing back the, there? Not the cardinals. I know, not the poor cardinals. They're like one in a million. Like you see them every like three or four weeks and then you're going to yes. kill them. I just felt for this guy. Luckily, he let the manager thing go after the guy was like, listen, just, you know, I don't know. I forgot what he said. Spray <laughs> some dog pee on it or something and they'll go away. <laughs> and the guy seems satisfied with the answer. But just his propensity, this guy's propensity to completely over exaggerate exactly what was going on. Like yeah. people that, you know. We all need attention in our own way. Brian starts a podcast. Somebody walks into Home Depot and claims he's been there for two hours. I suppose. People are on edge. People are right on edge, man. I watched a video mm-hmm. right before we came on air. And again, the audio is not so fantastic. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to play it uh, just for the sake of playing it. But I'm sure you've seen this. The lady, the, the lady who went fucking nuts in the Target. Did you on see On the this? Target and the mass display? I didn't watch the video uh, okay, itself, but I heard. There's a video. She wears a $40,000 watch. And well, that's what she claims. You don't see the yeah. watch in there, but that's what she claims. <laughs> lady goes into Target. I don't know where she is, fucking Sheboygan, Wisconsin or something. And she's like, no, no, you are not going to do this to us anymore. You are not going to do this to anymore. Guess what? We've been waiting to do this. We've been waiting to do this and she's talking to a a display full of masks she's like literally having a conversation with the mask you are not going to do this to us anymore you will i refuse to let this happen it's not going to happen not going to happen and then she she, film herself yes she was filming herself so you can't see her but you can just see the masks like she's obviously talking to the mask pointing at the mask and then she just destroys this whole 
display of masks. She's just throwing them on the floor, you know, yelling and screaming. And eventually wow. the uh, target people come up, right? And I, you can't really hear what they're saying because the video's of, of not great quality and she's holding the, the thing herself. And so it's, you hear the popping and the noise. But she's like, you know, I don't know, claiming the 89th Amendment, you know, the, the right to not wear masks. <laughs> not wear masks. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Some lady on the Facebook page was like, uh, the governor of Texas now is mandating masks. And she's in, instantaneously. For, and so one of my friends posts this news article and he said, well, that's a step in the right direction, right? And this yeah. lady instantaneously responds. I mean, like within seconds of this going up, it says like, you know, <laughs> one minute later, she goes, won't work unconstitutional and i'm like <laughs> which constitution are you reading because yes it would you have to wear seat belts you have to drive yeah. the speed limit like there's no law against making laws that's just the way that it is and if donald trump can keep immigrants in cages because he signed something with a pen this guy can make sure that everyone's wearing a mask when they're outdoors so anyway so the lady destroys this mask thing and then you <laughs> fast forward to her she is live uh, streaming herself on whatever platform, you know, Quay and on bullshit platform she happens to be uh, streaming herself. Yeah. And all you see is two police officers in a garage. And she's, uh, she's like, like a parking garage? Like, no, like her garage, like her personal oh, well, garage. Her garage. <laughs> and this is what she says. I'm paraphrasing, so don't fucking write me and tell me I'm just a guy on a podcast, okay? Because, you know, people like, they, they, you didn't get that right. They <laughs> oh, fuck yourself. <laughs> The fucking podcast. If you're going to get so upset right. about every, every little thing that I say, then you know what? Yeah. Listen, just listen louder. <clears throat> so <laughs> just subscribe to the break. Room. Subscribe to the break room. <laughs> if you can't see that the cup's half full, then the poster's not on the wall. <laughs> if you can't see that the poster is on the wall, then the cup is half full. Listen to right. that. Think about that. So she goes. You said it best. Thank you. She goes. You can't arrest me. I am on a secret. I, I have top secret clearance with Quayanon. This is what she says. I have oh top secret clearance God. with Quayanon. I am in direct communication with the White House right now. I have a wire on me. I'm talking to them all the time. So the police officer goes, oh, really? You, you have a wire on you? You're, you? Have you talked to them today? And she goes, I talk to them all the time. The wire's on me right now. They know everything. And I have top secret clearance. <laughs> And he says, well, can you explain to me why you destroyed the, the mask? <laughs> why? Yeah. And she goes, I can't. That's top secret information. And you don't have clearance. None of you have clearance. And I'm like, oh, my fucking Christ. So the first video is kind of funny, a little bit interesting. The second video gets a little bit sad because now you know that this yeah. lady is just mentally ill. Delusional. I honestly think that like Facebook and Twitter and whatever 4chan or whatever people are on going down these rabbit holes. I think some people are really mentally unfit to be on these boards because oh yeah for they, sure <laughs> they, for sure <laughs> they get sick and so the, of course they arrest the delay she you know she tells them that well, yeah, you can't just go into a store and destroy I, I mean her comeback was when the target manager said this the following something very similar you can't just walk into the store and destroy this she said well you let all the black lives people do it and let black lives matter people do it and i'm like oh god oh, yeah it's like people are getting they're literally hooked up into their internet dumb machines and they're just sucking the information in and they'll believe anything anybody writes and you know it's just some shithead little teenager on his computer writing these conspiracy <laughs> theories <laughs> Someone wrote exactly. I mean, you can find anything on the internet to back up your, you know, what you want to think. I could say anything so. on this podcast, and somebody <laughs> might take it to be the truth. Yeah. I mean, and so yes. I, yeah, the new it one going around. You know, Chester Bennington, the guy from uh, Lincoln Park. Oh right, yeah, yes. the guy who committed, who the guy died. who died, not right. to commit suicide, but yes. the guy who died yeah. from a drug overdose. Apparently, mm -hmm. the new conspiracy theory mm -hmm. going around, which has been flying around my Facebook wall, is is that. Chester Bennington is actually the illegitimate son of John Podesta, the guy who worked for the Obama administration, and that he was about to take down a worldwide pedophile ring, and so they had him killed. John Podesta had his own son killed. What? Yeah, which, by the way, Chester Jesus. Bennington's father is alive and well and living in, you know, shithead Texas. He's not John Podesta. And it's just like, but people are... I, and then... Like somebody would comment and then someone would say, that's not true. Oh, right. Chester that Bennington's right. father. Right. And then people would come back with like sheeple, sheeple, 
you know, people just won't open their eyes. They're in the dark sheep all. Oh and I'm God. like, oh my God, people are, people are going nutty, Chrissy. It's getting, yeah, I think it gets, no, it, it's bordering on a little bit of scary. So it is. So I let's know, talk about I'm something much more interesting <laughs> or much less interesting, depending on who you are. Okay. I got, we've, the kid is now sleeping in his own bed after a two year oh, you know, struggle. Nice. I know. And he's such a, he's, he's a cute a little boy. And boy. He's getting used to it. Which means yeah. that my wife and I now have our That's big. our bedroom back. It's huge. It's huge. Yes. By the way, if you ever just have in time, you have your bedroom back just in time for to put your another new one in child. there. Yeah, that's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you ever have a child, don't start the bad habit of letting them sleep in your bed. I don't know how it's oh. going to work out for you, but it it mm-hmm. it's hard on everybody because it's cute yeah. and you love it, and then yes. it's warm and you're cuddly and everyone's having a good time. But my son, for the last like six months, was getting super extra squirrely and waking up all the time. And he was like literally right. thrashing around in his own bed. He doesn't do any of that. And so now my suspicion is, is that he actually wanted to be in his own bed too. <laughs> like he wanted to just, I guess he just couldn't communicate that to us, right? Yes. And so Good. he's so he goes into his own bedroom now. And so my wife and I have our room back. Like we can watch some TV. We can watch a movie yeah. if we want to. We can have a little romance. Right. And romance when you have a child and one on the way is get to bed a little bit early. <laughs> yes. And so, hey, baby. I, she <laughs> says sexy, wor- bow, sexy bow. words to me like, go ahead, fall asleep. Fall asleep. <laughs> 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 uh, this tallywhacker's not getting to use tonight because go ahead, fall asleep. And I'm like, oh, baby, talk dirty to me. Talk to, keep talking. Count some sheep. <laughs> <laughs> If your pants are around your ankles, you're ready to get on the train. If your pants are around your ankles, you're ready to get on the train. Yes. Shh. The more, the lower you say it. Sleep well, little bri bri. (laughs) 30, 29, 28. (laughs) Boom. Sleep. We, there's a, there's a counting method to putting children to sleep. That I made up by myself, so I don't know where I don't know where I came up with it. <laughs> but I, when Matthias was having trouble sleeping, Did it just put you to sleep. It, it put really, Astrid to sleep like worked. this, and then it started putting me to sleep. Like I was the one counting, but I was the one falling asleep. <laughs> right. And so I figured, like from some of my yoga practices, that there's some voice methodology to like getting in a relaxed state, right? So I'd be like, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and counting backwards is always the best, as you learn in school. Where I don't yes. know, but I remember this from school, mainly from me sleeping in high school, any of the high school classes that I failed. But you could. They have you do that too when you go in surgery. Oh, yeah, that's Count right. backwards. Uh, I wonder why mm. backwards. I don't know. I don't know, but it works on my son. So, I'm, so now I'm like 30, 29, 28. <laughs> so we started doing this and it works like fucking magic. So I count down from 30 to 20 and Matthias will start yawning instantaneously. He'll start yawning. Wow. It's, but he's got to be like, he can't be running around the room. He's got to be in, yeah. like, he, he's got to be sitting up in the bed. He's obviously tired and he just, well, he's fighting it. Right. But right. I start and then he starts yawning and he usually takes me, I'll usually count down two or three times and then he's out like a light. But what nice. started, so we did this like three months ago. What started happening was I'd start counting down and Astrid would be asleep by 25. She'd go, <laughs> right. And then eventually I was falling asleep too. I was the one doing the counting and I was putting myself to sleep. I can imagine. <laughs> I wish I had learned this so early on in life. After a long night out at the strip club, I'd be like, <laughs> 30. <laughs> 29. Actually, I'd be like 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24. It's not working. Save a little bit for the morning. Save a little bit for the morning. <laughs> Best advice I ever heard. I wish I would have ever used it. Not once. Not once did I use that advice. Save some for tomorrow. <laughs> no, you can't do it. Hey, man, let's have a few beers and we'll save some for tomorrow. Save some for tomorrow? What are you fucking talking about? We gotta, we're going to cure coronavirus right here. <laughs> and game world peace. <laughs> I'm going to write an album. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a concept album better than the wall. <laughs> Oh, oh my 
my god <laughs> holy shit that was funny uh so <laughs> Astrid and i get the bedroom back and i'm like we're gonna watch a movie tonight honey let's watch a movie i hear that hamilton is out mm, on disney plus on disney plus right? yeah and since since all we do is watch disney plus let's go to the adult section and see if we can watch something yeah so i put on hamilton failing to understand that hamilton is literally three hours long and literally three hours of singing there's no at least at least the 27 minutes that i watched it's a musical there's not a word spoken it's 27 mm-hmm. minutes of speaking and while it's a great song that they seem to be singing for 27 minutes in a row <laughs> it, i was like oh i don't i can't do this and then astrid was like i can't do this i think if i was seeing it in a theater that it might right. be much more interesting live uh, yeah live but i had no idea that hamilton was going to be three hours of singing just singing yeah. <laughs> that's why i'm not I, i'm the same way i'm not really a huge fan of all of the musicals um there's a couple like chicago <clears throat> really like Chicago and the movie. Um, but it's like, you know, that what was the La La Land that came oh, out? Oh, La La recently? Land. I actually like La La Land. But there's yeah. talking in that movie. Like it's not there's all songs, right? Yeah, that's true. But, <clears throat> I actually yeah. like the movie, but I just like the like the whole jazz thing. I think it's interesting. It's interesting to me anyway, as a yeah. musician who plays mm-hmm. over sixteen different instruments. <laughs> You're like Prince. I am like Prince. <laughs> Can't play one song in any of you've them. You've heard that. You've heard that before, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I'm trying to impress Astrid, and I'm like, <clears throat> when we're first dating, we go over to Switzerland, or not Switzerland? Excuse me, we go over to France, and we're in the Pyrenees Mountains for nice. New Year's Eve, and this is when we're uh, still dating, right? Where I think we may yeah. be engaged at the point, and we we go to this big party at this hotel in the top of the Pyrenees mountains. So it's just like, so it's just wonderful, right? You just, Mm -hmm. what you think of as it's a dream vacation. Right. And so we're there with all of her family members and all this stuff. So when I was first trying to impress Astrid, I explained to her that I was a (laughs) multi-talented musician, right? Well, it just so happens that at, you know, Chalet La 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 in uh, the Pyrenees mountains (laughs) in France, has a grand baby grand piano where there is a child that's like nine years old who's playing some, you know, concerto on it, right? But he's not like yes. he wasn't hired by the hotel. He's just a kid. He's just at playing the, it. Yeah, at this New Year's Eve party. It's like a hotel party, right? Everyone gets served dinner and then we all dance and there's a DJ and all this other stuff. And so this is before it's a cocktail hour. And right. so Astrid starts speaking in Spanish and her dad starts encouraging me to play the piano. And Astrid goes, come on, honey, go play, go play a few things. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't know any, you know, I'm, I'm a little rusty. I don't know anything by heart. La, 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 la. I've I'm played in 15 years. I'm picturing two ways this went. <laughs> Either you were one of those who like, no, 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 I'm not going to no, do no, it. No, I can't like do this. Bust yeah. into like this huge rendition where you're like putting your foot up on the, <laughs> on the piano. Or you didn't play so well. So... <laughs> kind of bold so for like 15 minutes i play it down right no 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 no. i don't want to show anybody up that's not my piano right. i'm not sure it's, it's tuned not, correctly to I my want to show this i have a special tuning <laughs> i need a special tuning for mine it's like <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> i'm so good <laughs> i need a special tuning <laughs> So it's yes. obvious that everyone's making fun of me in Spanish because like, this guy doesn't know how to fucking play the piano. Right. And I know this, but I don't have Spanish to know that everyone's like, sure, he plays piano yeah, right. special right. tuning. <laughs> you, know, you think you're a bunch of dumb fucking idiots, right? And I'm like, I got to just play something just to like prove that I actually know how to play the piano. But the Chopsticks. only I, <laughs> Worse. So the only thing that I could think to play... <laughs> Was home sweet, home sweet home, by Motley Crue. <laughs> uh, it's it's oh mid, my god! French chalet in the Pyrenees Mountains. <laughs> Twenty of my closest family members. <laughs> they don't speak a lick of English. I don't speak a lick of Spanish, and I'm playing home sweet home by Motley Crue. <laughs> Astrid's dad's like, what song is that? And I'm like, oh, it's a a special one. It's It's a New Year's song. (laughs) 
It's Beethoven. Some of his early work. <laughs> 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 it's some of his lesser early stuff. known yeah. early. <laughs> it's from his first album. <laughs> if you like the Ninth Symphony, you should check out his early work. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. The first symphony. <laughs> the ninth is after he sold out. It's not so good. <laughs> Here, let me play. I'm on my way. Just set me free. <laughs> Oh, sweet. Oh, oh my God. My oh. stomach's hurting from life. Oh, my God. I, can't drink. I hope this is half as funny to the people listening. Because <laughs> it's funny to me. <laughs> was Astrid impressed? Well, no, she, she was you. not. <laughs> no, <laughs> she, she was <laughs> not. So then I think as a smart ass move for the next like three birthdays and, and, <laughs> and holidays, she got me a musical <laughs> instrument. <laughs> Like here, shithead, play this new guitar I got you, and I'd be like, oh yeah, later, later, <laughs> uh, later. <laughs> I'm too busy at work. <laughs> uh, man, God bless America. That was pretty funny. I just, that was a good yeah. laugh. <laughs> that was a good I'm picturing laugh. Picturing the whole thing. It's like it's just how you pictured it too. It's like the snow in the backgrounds and the mountains outside the windows, and it's dark and there's lights all over. You know, the beautiful lights and the trees and. Right. People skiing in an island. A at holiday the lodge, scene. Right? Yeah, and everyone's dressed up in tuxedos and beautiful. Here comes Brian <laughs> with a home sweet home. And by the way, the nine year old <laughs> eventually stood behind me. <laughs> I think his parents had encouraged him to take over. <laughs> like, hey, we paid $1,000 a head for this party. We're not going to let this shit get ruined. <laughs> right. He didn't need a special tuner. Yeah. And so just as hard as we were laughing, that's how hard my in-laws were laughing after I got off the piano. <laughs> and my father-in-law just looked at me and he goes, you don't know how to play the piano. <laughs> that kid knows how to play the piano. Yeah. <laughs> you know how to put your fingers on the keys. <laughs> <laughs> come, come on, honey. Play come a little on. something. <laughs> play me a little something. <laughs> so now it's a running joke every time that, you know, there's an instrument in in vicinity. Then right. they say, hey, play me something. Brian. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> Great. So I've got well, two. You were in a band. I was in a band, but I was singing in that band, and I did. <laughs> <laughs> which is, oh, I mean, <laughs> my voice is my instrument. That's right. That's, <laughs> That's right. right. So then, people sometimes will ask me to sing, and I'm like, "You got to be fucking kidding me!" <laughs> no, I'm right. feeling a twitch <laughs> in <Yeah>. my throat. <laughs> Have you ever heard the band Creed? Just imagine that much worse. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, Sc- Scott Stab has nothing on me. <clears throat> <sighs> I saw, I, we were flying out of Atlanta, speaking of Creed, we were flying out of the Atlanta airport one time. And it's me and Astrid and Matthias, and he's just a little baby, and it's crowded as shit. You know, we're in the international terminal, and we're getting something to eat at that food court. It's very crowded, so mm-hmm. everyone's kind of packed in next uh, to each that other. International terminal is really nice here. It's beautiful, Atlanta. yeah. Mm-hmm. And they have the they, huge. They, they in fact have a piano. <laughs> we're so many <laughs> places. <laughs> yeah, that guy makes it. Guy, someone actually wants to pay him. The people want to pay me to get off the piano, so. We get something to eat at whatever the Burger King or the McDonald's, and we're about to fly to Spain. And we take a seat at a very in the very crowded at this time um, food court, and we sit next. You know, it's a two person table, so we roll mm-hmm. up the stroller at the time on the right side of me, and then Astrid sits on the couch, which it's like a big long bench, and then I sit in the chair. Little bench. And, yeah. mm-hmm. and I notice uh, the two guys next door have, both have, or the two guys next to me have the the guitar and so the <laughs> guitars and so the one guy moves his guitar case right so that we could put the thing there and i'm like oh thank you very much and he's like hey, yeah no problem and he is facing me so he's sitting on the side that astrid's sitting on and then i look over to the guy that's sitting facing my same way and it's scott stapp from creed oh <clears throat> yes and so and he's hard at work with a monster energy drink in his hand he's hard at work like spelling out how he's how he's going to put together this massive tour for his comeback album. You know, he's like, then we're going to go play Madison Square Garden. And then we're going to go yeah. play, you know, we're going to play Wembley Stadium, blah, 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 blah. Yes. At least that's what I'm I'm kind of catching from the thing, you know, and I'm like, right. oh, wow. 
And yeah, I don't. I still haven't heard about that comeback. <laughs> <laughs> it was just getting started when COVID. Yeah, hit. that's that's correct. So I'm gonna buy some um, because of all this coronavirus stuff. I'm gonna. I've decided that I'm gonna buy some shin guide. <laughs> some <laughs> shit guide. Do you know the what rock? Shin, it's a rock. <laughs> So for those of you that don't know, coronavirus is stopped by one of two things, either being in a large crowd where other people are not wearing masks. Right. That's apparently where coronavirus, there's like a big invisible force field, like a pool yep. or a concert or whatever. Yeah. But there's a secret weapon against coronavirus. <laughs> I don't know if you heard about it. It's called Shengite. And Shengite is a magic rock. It's about, uh, it's probably about the size of a half dollar and it's, you know, nice and smooth and it can be, it's got brown with like, you know, spots in it. Oh, like a little river pebble. Yeah, it's like a little it's like a, a little river pebble. And what it actually is doing is it's stopping the 5G waves that are coming off the towers from getting into your brain, which is actually causing coronavirus. Oh. You so, learn something new all the time. Well, here's how I learned this. There's this guy on Twitch. So, Twitch is this platform for for gamers to stream when they're gaming. Yeah, but I've I guess, heard of that. Yeah, it's like I've watched a few videos on there and there's a couple of guys that are on YouTube that I enjoy watching I, I think they have good shows on youtube and apparently they live stream on twitch so i've tried to catch them a couple times mm. on twitch uh and then what they do is essentially they do it a show while they're gaming right which is what a lot of people do and now donald yeah. trump has a twitch account i'm not sure if he's gaming Didn't they suspend his account or i something? wish they would i don't know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they watch him watch tv watch fox news <laughs> that's right um so so there's this guy called Doctor named Doctor Disrespect who has been on the platform for a while. And please, again, this I'm just I'm just learning about no this. disrespect, no disrespect to Doctor <laughs> Respect. Yeah, he seems like a pretty affable, funny guy. Like the couple of things that I watched of him, but he is their biggest star, one of their biggest stars. And then last Tuesday, he just falls off the platform. Like uh, Twitch says, they've sus- they've said they say nothing actually, and then Doctor Disrespect says nothing, and they but he's just gone. His channel's gone. Everything's huh. gone. And he just signed like a multi-year, multi-million dollar contract with Twitch. So Twitch is now signing their top, you know, people to keep them on uh, Twitch. So they don't go over to YouTube or Exclusive. whatever. Yeah, net, I don't, yeah, yeah, like Netflix is going to start carrying gamers for four hours a day. I don't know. Yeah. But <clears throat> this Dr. Disc Respect guy just falls off the face of the earth. And so he has millions of followers, most of which are young children, like teenagers and young kids and 20-somethings and they're all freaking out because Dr. Disrespect isn't on the show. And he's there like every day for like six hours a day. And so they're all freaking out. And they have like this whole, there's this whole thing going on about what happened. Did he sexually abuse somebody? Was it something nefarious? Like, is he running drugs right. or whatever? Right. It, it runs the gamut. But I found the most logical explanation is the guy about three months ago, all of a sudden started peddling like, this 5G is causing coronavirus bullshit conspiracy theory stuff. And huh. then he was telling people that he was buying Shengite to protect himself. And he was like showing it on air. And I don't know if he had a deal with the Shengite company or he was trying to sell it. Didn't I, I, I didn't hear that. It didn't seem like that to me. But I think what Twitch is saying to themselves is, hey, if we're going to gain some respect when the mainstream audience then we can't be the ones that are out there peddling fucking conspiracy chill, uh, uh, conspiracy theory <laughs> to fucking <laughs> children. <laughs> right. It uh, seems very uh, Alex <laughs> Jones. <laughs> it's like he's like the Alex Jones of three-year-olds. <laughs> right. Elmo killed Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> Kermie is not a frog. <laughs> Bert yeah. and Ernie are the same person. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Do you ever see them yeah. together at the same time? No, you don't. Yes. By the way. Yeah, oh, you do. Okay. <laughs> and you know, they have a character on there called Q. Maybe he's QAnon. Ooh. Maybe Sesame Street is the key to this whole shit. And Dr. Disrespect was about to take that shit down. And so they had yep. to put a stop to it because, you know, mainstream yeah. media and all that bullshit. Fake right. news. And all that shit. Mm-hmm. So I started doing some research on <laughs> Shen. So I started doing some research Shen on Shengite, and Shengite is actually a thing. And there are millions and millions of people around the world that are buying Shengite to protect themselves from five G waves. And huh. I'm like, what in the good fuck are you thinking? It's like a pet rock. You're buying a pet rock to protect you from coronavirus. You carry that in your pocket when you go around. It's not a fucking like. It's not an off product. 
It's not mosquito <laughs> repellent. <laughs> yeah, like it's not like a kryptonite type stone. <laughs> or is it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't a know rock about in your guy. sock will not protect your prick from getting sick. <laughs> a rock in your sock will not protect your prick from getting sick. <laughs> Nice. That's a good one. Thank you. I'm going to become a motivational speaker. I figure if this doesn't, if this whole thing doesn't work out, like if people turn on this episode, we'll pivot. Yeah, we'll pivot. As Allison Hare says, we're going to make the pivot to motivational speakers slash Shen Guide salespeople. Yeah. <laughs> or I can just play the piano on YouTube live for a couple hours a day <laughs> and have people pay me to. to <laughs> Like, it'll be a reverse subscription. Like, as soon as you get on the site, you have to pay a dollar to get off. <laughs> That's how I envision the break room. Like, I'm just going to trap people in, and then they're going to be... <laughs> You're in here now. I'm going to inundate you with emails <laughs> of my piano playing. When we send out the newsletter, I'm going to send you some the song that I played. I'm going to record it, and then I'm going to send it to you. And then you're going to pay me 99 cents plus shipping and handling. <laughs> For us to remove for you. us to remove you from the break room, which is fantastic. If people haven't turned us off already, this has been a podcast. Twenty two minutes of which is Kirby and I laughing. Yes, oh, I needed this. I really did. I was about to have I a mean, baby in like twenty two hours. I'm I like, enjoy it each week <clears throat> for laughing. I really I mean, do. We yeah. need laughter during this time. We sure. really do need it's laughter. It's so serious. And it's just. It's Why so to, serious? Uh, it's so good to break away and yeah, laugh. It's a tough time. But you, I think the laughter is it truly is a medicine. And I think it it's is. good. And I'm like this hour that we spend together. And this is all I hope for the podcast. Like we talk a lot about subscribe this and podcast hug and, you know, making a million dollars. No one ever listens. And we're a lot. We're very <laughs> self. <laughs> we're very self-effacing. Uh, but the truth is we, we do appreciate everyone who listens. And, uh, for us, all we can hope is that one person is getting a good laugh out of this. And I think that makes it worth it. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good break for anybody. (laughs) And one person is all that's going to get a laugh out of this because (laughs) she's the only one listening and she's my wife. (laughs) I know we have a good episode when I release an episode and then I like, I'll I'll spend all night producing the episode and putting it together and all this other stuff. And then I usually go get something to eat. It's like toward midnight when the episode is released. And I can yeah. hear my wife laughing in the other room. And so then I know we have a good episode because I'm like, ah, I got my wife. I got, yes. I got my wife. She's a good barometer. She's, she's a good barometer. <laughs> because she even she likes my piano playing. <laughs> oh, sweet. <clears throat> no. So let me tell you what's going to go on here. So let's do a little house cleaning before we, before we, before we go. Okay. In the month of July, Chrissy and I are not going to be doing fresh shows, but we are going to be doing, we are going to bring you new episodes. So we've recorded a number of episodes and those episodes are going to roll out over the next three or four weeks, depending. I'm having a baby. Chrissy's going to take some time off. We thought it was a good time to do that, but we have new episodes lined up in the can for you, as they say, Mm -hmm. professional speak, right? Professional pianist call it in the can. And I'm a (laughs) professional professional pianist. (laughs) Yeah, one's a follow-up, two of them. Two of them are a follow-up, yeah. So we have Rachel Rachel McGrath coming next week, and then Jeff's going to follow the week after that. And then we've got Christy and I will be back at it on the third week. So these are episodes that are going to air. And so some of the stuff, maybe we're talking about something that might seem a little dated, like a few weeks. And you'll know that that means that it's a new episode, but it was just recorded a while ago Mm -hmm. as I run off to have a baby. But keep on tuning in and make sure you go to tcbpodcast.com. You can listen to all the episodes, read the show notes, find out more about us. Follow us on social media at The Commercial Break on IG, and you can find us on Facebook and YouTube and join The Break Room. Uh, we'll send out a newsletter with behind the scenes stuff. Uh, behind the scenes stuffs. <laughs> <laughs> I love that stuff. Stuffs. stuffs. <clears throat> there's, a, there's a book, one final story for you. There is a book that my son loves. It's called Come Over and Play. And that come over to my house and play. And that is by Dr. Seuss. And it's one of his uh, books for children, children. It's not like one of the extra abstract ones. It's one that's pretty straightforward, but it's in rhyme. Right. And so my son, who's two years old, has now decided that this is the the only book that exists on the face of the earth is this book. And he must hear it repeatedly night after night. Right. Yes. And so I now know this book 
backwards and forwards. Like I know it. I don't even have to look at the pages. I just know it. I've read it like 150 times. So because my son doesn't really know what the fuck is going on, I just started making stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to keep it interesting for That's you. Right. Um, so go to tcbpodcast.com. Follow us on all the social media. Join the break room. We'll give you a newsletter with behind the scenes action access to all the live shows that will be coming up. We'll do a few of those a year. Who knows? We might do much more of them. Uh, we've got a YouTube channel coming up online. And then of course, um, we'll give you a extra hour of content, which I don't know. We'll, we'll record it and then we'll just send it out. It'll be a good one. It'll be a fun episode just like this. I'm excited. I'm going to have to put, I'm going to have to put my face on for the YouTube. Oh yeah. As, yeah, my, yeah, yeah. as my grandmother used to say. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with my face. I'm just going to keep on hiding it behind this microphone like I do right now. (laughs) I'm going to get a bigger windscreen. For those of you that can't see me, we'll we'll put a picture of this on the website. But most of my face is covered by a windscreen, which is a thing that covers the microphone. And it's like half my face. I'm just going to get a bigger one (laughs) that covers my entire face. So it'll just be my face and yeah, then your windscreen. It'll be your face. I think you should be the face of the, <laughs> the man behind world. the screen. <laughs> uh, I love so it. go to tcbpodcast.com and you can join the break room there. Only people that join the break room will get those uh, extras. And please subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all of them. So uh, please subscribe. And, and, and I must implore you, please, please, please leave a review. It helps us out in ways. I can't even begin to explain because I don't even really understand. It's just like how I really don't like to play piano. I really don't know how to play piano. (laughs) But I tell myself I do. I'm telling you to subscribe. I really don't know why it works, uh, but it works. To leave a review. To leave a review. Please leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. Uh, Chrissy Hoadley, I love you. I love you, Brian Green. And and good luck. Thank you very much. For your upcoming birth. We're having a new and have fun (laughs) on your time off. I uh, thank you. It's well deserved. And so, (laughs) (laughs) if the beach is still open, (laughs) I think the beach will still be open. I think you'll be fine. But just be careful. Don't. The good news is where where you're going, the particular place where you're going, it's never crowded because they don't have the hotel capacity for crowds. So it's, good. it's not like the, the place can get overrun with people like Destin right. or Panama City or somewhere like that. Yeah. It's a very quiet island. Good. And the part of the island that you're going to be on is extra quiet. It's on the like the far Yay. end of the island. So you'll have plenty of space out there. But, you know, just good. don't get yourself in a pickle with the hotel pools or anything like that. No, <clears throat> no. Please, because I need you back. <laughs> I'll be back. I need you back, babe. Channeling Mike McD, my man. (laughs) He still sounds great. I listened to him for like an hour today. I put on the best of Mike McDonald and I just, and I just drove. I just was like, this is fantastic. It's total yacht rock, total cock rock. And I just love it. I think it's It's great. Yeah, it's really good. Better than Mike (laughs) McCroom. And so to all of our friends all across the world, we say good night and we love you. And while we won't see you next week, you'll hear a brand new episode. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Yay. Bye. Bye. Email us at thecommercialbeat at gmail.com. Find us and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Commercial Break. New episodes drop every Wednesday. We can be found on Spotify, iHeartMedia, Apple, Google, and all major podcast providers. The Commercial Break is a great middleweight production. Written and produced by Brian Green. Co-hosted by Chrissy Hoadley.